right. There's four sources in the Old Testament or the Hebrew Bible. Four stories that we know came together. One was called the priestly. There's a source called the priestly. And it used the name Elohim or El Shaddai for God. And I believe El is the root word for Ella as well. So, and that's usually translated as God or the gods because Elohim is, is utilized as plural in the beginning books of the, of, the, of the Bible. And it's newer than the Yahweh's version. Now, the reason I'm telling you that is because Genesis 1, which is the first story, isn't as old as Genesis 2. Genesis 2 contains, the, the Yahweh's version contains the story, for example, of Adam and Eve. And that's older than the very first book in the Bible. But they decided to put the newer version first. And, well, it isn't, and I think it's because it deals with more fundamental abstractions. It's something like that. It's like it deals with the most basic of abstractions. How the universe was created. And then segues into what the human environment is like. And so that seems to be the logic behind it. Um, the Yahwist version uses the name... Y-H-W-H, which apparently people didn't say, but we believe was pronounced something like Yahwa. Um, and it, it has a strongly anthropomorphic God, so one that takes human form. It begins with Genesis 2-4. This is the account of the heavens and the earth when, and it contains the story of Adam and Eve and Cain and Abel and Noah and the Tower of Babel and Exodus and Numbers, along with the priestly version. It also contains the law in the form, just the form of the Ten Commandments, which is like a truncated form of the, of the law. There's the Elohist uh, source. It contains the stories of Abraham and Isaac. It, it's concerned with a heavenly hierarchy that includes angels. It talks about the departure from Egypt. And it presents the covenant code, which is this idea of that, you know, that society is predicated this was Israeli society. It was predicated on a covenant with God, and that's laid out in a sequence of rules, some of which are the Ten Commandments, but many of which are much more extensive than that. And then the final one is the Deuteronomist Code, and it contains the bulk of the law and the, what's called the Deuteronomic History, and it's independent of Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, and Numbers. And so we know that at least for... Now, there's debate about this, like there is about everything, you know, so I'm brushing over a very large area of scholarship, but people generally assume that there were multiple authors um, over multiple periods of time, and the way they've concluded that is by looking at textual analysis, you know, trying to see where there are chunks of the stories that have the same kind of style or the same reference, and people argue about that because, you know, it, obviously it's difficult to recreate something ancient, but... That's, that's the basic idea. So it is an amalgam of viewpoints about these initial issues, and, and that's important to know. So it's like a collective, it's a collective story. And, uh, okay, now, to understand the first part of Genesis, I'm going to turn, strangely enough, to something that's actually part of the New Testament, and this is a central element of Christianity. And it's a very strange idea, and it's going to take a very long time to unpack.